Hello, I'm Pastor Dennis Elder of Victory Bible Church here in Enid, Oklahoma. We are located on 20th and Elm Street, and I thank you for listening today on KBBN 99.9 on your radio. Now, if you have your Bibles, would you please turn to Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Now, as I was thinking about all the coronavirus victims who are sick with this virus, many people are in the hospitals throughout our nations, and many are dying. Have you ever heard the saying, Is there a doctor in the house? Now, in Mark 2, Starting with verse 13, it reads, Once again Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw a Levite, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at the Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collector, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for this message. I ask for your blessings to be upon it today. May you speak to hearts today. Convict the hearts that need to hear this message. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we begin our hospital scene and in taking a tour through the many departments and functions of the hospital and compare that to what we ought to be and are in the church. Now the hospital is a place to provide assistance and treatment to those in need of relief from pain and sickness. It provides many facets and functionalities that at the end of the day results in what it is designed to do, save lives. Now the hospital is also a place where you come to seek help and seek assistance to get better or ensure you remain in a healthy state once your health has been compromised or challenged from poor living habits or sudden accidents or trauma. And this is a home also for many doctors and physicians. Now, if you're old enough and if you remember, doctors used to make house calls for checkups and would surround themselves with people who were sick in order to study them and learn about the illness to develop treatments and healing. And today, you have to prove you have insurance in order to be seen at any time or even pre-authorized before having a procedure done. Now the church was a place once upon a time where it housed the sick and shut in. Remember them? It was a place where food banks would be designed and function as a place for the sinner to come to be nursed back to health in their spirit. It was a place where the physicians on staff would be available on call to pray with and for all who entered. And the doors of the church were always open back then, but now function similar to the hospital, where some you have to schedule time to meet with the pastor and have a certain coverage in order to be seen. And the pastor, in some case, will need to be prepaid before performing certain duties or coming to see about the saint or sinner, which causes some to remain sick, lost, or even die in their ailment. And the people who go to intensive care units or the emergency room or by ambulance or walk-ins or urgent care 
need immediately help. And there are people who look at sick people as if they are disgusting or contagious. So it is also in the church. They put on their church faces like they got it all together and all well and sicker than you. You're just a dressed up mess. You're near death and don't even know it. And Jesus came to the folks who were sick and tired and near death and wanted healing. So when you enter the emergency room, you normally don't enter with a smile or a calm attitude. But you are thirsty for healing. You are despair for deliverance from pain and agony. And a lot of times people are shouting because they are in pain. But it's a hospital. It's created to heal and deliver relief. Now Jesus came to sit among those who needed his healing. Why sit among those who are well? They already got it, so they think. And you, you're walking around judging the sick, and your heart is about to fall out of your chest. You're sick and don't even know it. And let me say the church is not for a bunch of pretty hats and suits. It's an emergency room. It's a trauma center. And folks are in need of deliverance. It's a war to train and rehabilitate the ones who have been lost and sick. It's an emergency room. Have you ever been so sick for so long and the doctor asks you how long or when did the symptoms start and you have no answer? So it is in the church. You've been so sick so long, Sunday after Sunday, same ailment, and can't even recall when the pain started. But all you know is, is there a doctor in the house? I need the doctor to take this pain away. And sitting in the emergency room requires patience for the patients. You have to be a patient patient. And all you want is to be seen. All you want is to be diagnosed to why this is bothering me. And all you want is what's inside you to come out to make you feel better. Where is the doctor? And preachers have tried to become doctors and create schedules and secretaries to get with them and schedule appointments. So whatever happened to the walk-ins? Jesus had walk-ins all the time. They didn't have time to wait. And we need to stop putting on band-aids on the gapping wounds and get stitched up. People are putting band-aids on broken hearts and they need to be under the knife. They need a blood transfusion. They need the blood of the lamb. They need CPR. And they are dying in the pews and need to be resuscitated. And sometimes we need to call on hopless. That's for people who need comfort, who are dying, and there's not much time left. And spiritually, they need the Lord Jesus Christ in their heart. And this is what the church is about. We need to go and get others who need to be healed. Go and get others who are dying in their sins. And stop coming and getting your healing all by yourself and leaving others dead. Bring them to the hospital. Checkups are needed daily. Get in your word and get your daily dose. And there are a lot of people spiritually who are sick without the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what I'm trying to say today, if you're without the Lord Jesus Christ, if you never have accepted Jesus as your Savior, you are a very sick person and you're dying. And you don't need a hospital. What you need is Jesus Christ. He is the mighty physician. He is the healer of this world. You know, a lot of people put off on seeing the doctor. Maybe you have been putting off too long in accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You see, Jesus Christ paid the price for all of us by going to the cross and Dying on the cross for our sins. And the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And the Bible also says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you heard how the church is compared to the hospital. But the church is a spiritual hospital. People who are dying without Christ, who need Him in their heart. And we, as a church, are there to help them to make that decision. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your love, for your healing power. We thank you for your word where it says, where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst. Father, I pray for the ones who were listening today without Christ, that they'll make that decision before it's too late. Convict their hearts and let them know that you're so real and you are the healer of this world. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.